Jamie, you played a real life character. When you're playing that role, how much do you have to be faithful to him? The first thing that helped me was aesthetically. We are part of the same tribe in a sense. Our cheekbones, our, the diamond shaped head, the, that haircut that he had. I had that in the 80s uh, as well. So aesthetically, mm. we, were, we were ahead of the game. I didn't have a chance to see him actually alive, but I had to sort of like piece things together through what people would say. Mm. And then talking to Brian Stevenson, and hearing him talk about who's how... Who's the real life attorney. Who's the real life attorney. That the film's based on. Who, you know, goes and meets this, this guy on death row and finds out all these incredible, these horrible things that he's on death row without a trial. They say he killed a white woman in the city they didn't ever been in. And like, it, he couldn't believe that this existed. But he told me how Walter was. He felt like, you know, since I'm in this situation, um, I might as well do everything I can to help. So when you see in the movies talking to all the prisoners and everything like that, trying to keep up their morale, these guys on uh, death row. So I took that as the, the spirit of it. And then it was a matter of the vernacular, being in, um, you know, Alabama, and the way they talk like that, where they, the way they say their things, and, you know, and to make that not be caricature. Like, I remember Michael B. Jordan, listen, now, nah, don't do that. Because it started sounding like, um, something to, 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 where we really couldn't understand me. So we sort of dial that in. So sometimes you have to rely on the people that are around mm. you to say what, what makes the most sense. You, you shot in a real life prison, yeah. right? Because those prison scenes are phenomenal. They're really incredible. Uh, did you, ever you have think- had, you ever, The one moment when the cuffs was being put on me and they had a guy who was part of the prison system uh -huh. It wasn't part of the movie. Yeah, yeah, squeeze it tighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Squeeze it tighter, because he's a, he's a bigger one. Mm. Squeeze it tighter. You know, there was a couple of times I was like, hey, man, don't squeeze them. Don't, they're tight enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he doesn't know that he's saying something that is taking me to, yeah. like, I'll come out these cuffs. At, <laughs> yeah. But that's his everyday life. Uh-huh. We become so used to it too, because we're talking to Brian, Brian Stevens and talking about changing the perception because the perception kills us. It's like the reason I don't want to go see somebody in jail is because I don't want to get used to that. But so many people are just used to seeing their father, their brother, their, who are their mothers in jail. And the next thing you know, we start rapping about it. We should rap about being in jail because we, we don't have any other thing. This is all we see. Mm. So it's a, it's a, it's a you know, it was a tough, mm. it's a tough thing. The movie process, it's a little bit different, if you know what I mean. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's like... You mean in the theater? Or? No, just, not even that. Just like when I was on in, uh, uh, Any Given Sunday, I remember Oliver Stone, when I first auditioned, was like, you're horrible when I auditioned. Mm. And I was like, why? Because I was a television actor. So everything I did was loud. Yeah, so you better understand this with the football in the air, man. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, get the fuck out of here. And I remember, all of finally get tough. The, huh? yeah, all very of be tough. No, very. but it was, but I learned from that toughness, hmm. meaning like when he finally decided to, you know, make the decision for me to be the lead, he still would grill me. He said, that's not it. That's hmm. not it. That's not it. Like working with Quentin Tarantino. And I watched an actor struggle because the, the set was like, it was heavy. I mean, you had, you had Samuel Jackson here, you had Leo. I mean, it was some juggernauts, you know, and Samuel, come on, motherfucker, say that shit. Yeah. And the dude, was, <laughs> the dude was trying to say, come on, come on, oh, get it. Oh, yeah. And the guy was trying to get his line. Cool. And I watched Quentin Tarantino go to him, I'll tell you, everything's fine, just go to the same line. Right, yeah. And I was like, damn, this shit ain't gonna work out, right? But then you see the movie. <laughs> I said, God damn. And Quentin said, all I need is one. Sure. Even working yeah. with Christoph, Chris, Christoph Walsh, watching him work, I learned a little more about movie. I watched him fold a paper. Some motherfucker wrote on a thing and was just supposed to put it in his pocket. It seemed like it took him forever to do it. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> And he had, it was nothing else existed but that moment, right? Christoph Walsh's process wasn't that I'm going to have all of these things memorized and do all of these things at once. He would give you these, calm yourselves, gentlemen. I, mm. One more time. 
<laughs> Calm yourselves, gentlemen. I am but a weary traveler. And we were watching it, and Leo was like, <laughs> I said, Leo, you think you got it? He's got something, pal. <laughs> Just keep watching. Some shit is going on, pal. <laughs> and you see all these little bits of things, and then all of a sudden in the movie, boom, calm yourself, mm. gentlemen. I was like, oh, shit. And then I like to thank the Academy. <laughs> hey, I'm Charlotte LaBeouf. Hey, I'm Jamie Foxx. Hi, I'm Tom Hanks. I'm Adam Sandler. Thank you for watching Hollywood Reporter Roundtables. Roundtables on YouTube. On YouTube. I think that's the one right there. <laughs>